Old school liberals remembered Kennedy making a more audacious statement than Gingrich did yeah. when we didn't have a vehicle that wouldn't kill you by going into orbit. And he says in eight years, we're going to land a man on the moon and bring him back safely to Earth. And then Gingrich, after we've already been to the moon, says in his eight years, he just wants to build a colony there. That's not audacious. In the scheme of, 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 of ambitious ideas about what we should do in space, first. Second, <laughs> what would it get us? Why, when, what, say, okay, we got the colony, and then what? He's got a pink berry up there. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a, a it'd, uh, be, it'd be worth every dime if Newt Gingrich would relocate there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sheldon Adelson wants to build a casino on the moon. You have to get a booster rocket, just pop <laughs> out of the hole. Booster rocket. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's ten thousand dollars a pound to low Earth orbit. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta. To what back end? To, that end. To, to what end? It assumes it, the the question. The very question presumes that these are just activities unto themselves to entertain those who like space. No. Yeah. No, but I just want to know, because we've had a space yeah. program for a long time, and, and what we've gotten out of it is Tang and LASIK surgery. Oh, <laughs> no. come on. You no. know what we got? No. Wait, 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 wait. You know what we no. got out of What'd it? What did we get? I'll tell you exactly. I'm not even going to list the spinoffs. Just I, I could, but I'm not. I'm going to list something else. List three. It transformed the culture of the United States of America in that decade to be one of innovation and discovery. And when you have that as part of your culture, you innovate. And when you innovate, when you innovate, you, when you innovate, you are responsible for birthing entire new economies that drive your nation's wealth. And during that decade, there were no jobs going overseas because they didn't know how to do what it is we were innovating. When you stop innovating, sorry, when you stop innovating, then everybody catches up. And of course the jobs are going to go overseas because in a multinational well, corporation... Well, there's, there's lots of ways, to be honest, you can innovate without going into outer space. We've done a lot of innovation. Okay, but and, but, it, uh, well, but wait, wait, it's, mankind's, it's mankind's fundamental drive to explore. Look at Europe when they sent the explorers across the I, Atlantic and so... I think, except I think the, it's part of a human There were other motives product. there. I mean, Queen, uh, Queen Isabella said, by the way, Columbus, you may be an explorer and a discoverer, but while you're going, take these Spanish flags with you and put them <laughs> wherever <right>. you... <laughs> wherever you park ship. Yeah. So, so you can have geopolitical drivers for this. That's, that's all I'm saying. What I'd okay. like is a suite of launch vehicles that where we can just choose what destination we want for whatever reason that drives it. It could be scientific, it could be touristic, it could be um, uh, geopolitical. And that way, the solar system becomes our backyard. And to advance a space frontier, you have to innovate when tomorrow you do something that you did not do today. And that's the culture I want to resurrect from that era, the golden era of space exploration. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. It's, it's